Wow, this guy has gained international fame for its, uh, not-so-attractive looks. But it was an unfair competition. I'm talking about the one and only blobfish. This thing was once on display in an aquarium, looking like a gloopy, slimy, well, blob. But underwater in its natural habitat, it looks like any other normal fish. It's a deep-sea dweller living off the coast of Australia. The blobfish thrives at around 3,000 feet below the surface. At those depths, the pressure is 120 times higher than what you and I are used to. In fact, only robust submarines can go that deep. This droopy creature doesn't have a skeleton or much muscle. Instead, it has jelly-like flesh to combat the extreme underwater pressure. You also won't find a great white shark in any aquarium you go to. In the past, many have tried adding great whites along other sharks in their tanks, but it never worked out. They'd stop eating and even struggle to swim. Doesn't make for great business either. It's too costly to keep the great white because a large enough tank will need millions of gallons of water. These fish don't like staying in one area for long. They prefer open waters where they can swim vast distances. We haven't seen one in captivity since the 1970s. The Saola, better known as the Asian unicorn, was just discovered in 1992. It lives on the slopes of the Annamite Mountains between Laos and Vietnam. It looks like an antelope, but genetic tests show it's more closely related to cows. The Saola is one of the rarest large mammals in the world. Surveys estimate there are just 70 to 750 left in the wild. Yeah, that's a pretty big range. Experts can't get a more specific number because they're impossible to spot. Only two have been caught and studied. On to the unicorns of the sea, narwhals. There are more than 80,000 of these creatures, but they're still near threatened. They've got long, narrow tusks protruding from their heads. This unicorn-like tusk is actually a tooth that can grow up to 10 feet. They belong to the whale family, but unlike their relatives, they don't migrate. Narwhals spend their lives in the Arctic waters of Greenland, Canada, Norway, and Russia. They live up to 50 years in the wild, but they can't make it in captivity. So if you want to see one in real life, the zoo isn't the place to look. Unlike other creatures on the list, swallows are very common. You might recognize this pretty bird from those gorgeous blue feathers running from their head to tail. Even though they're one of the most widespread species, they're not suited for zoos. They eat on the fly, literally, and catch their food in the air, which is why they only feed on flying insects. They need to live in large aviary structures with plenty of flying room, and most zoos can't provide that. You'll find plenty of lowland gorillas in captivity. The same can't be said about mountain gorillas. These apes have longer hair, and they're more grayish than brown. There are only about 1,000 of them in the wild, making them an endangered species. Mountain gorillas usually spend a quarter of their day eating. Back in the 60s and 70s, there were many attempts to catch them and start a captive population. But it was impossible. They might not do well in enclosed environments because of their particular dietary needs. Without those, the gorilla's health declined noticeably. Another issue could have been stress. Now, there aren't any mountain gorillas in any facility. Diving back into the water, we have the giant squid, a behemoth that inspired lore of the kraken. This creature remains a mystery to scientists. Their inhospitable deep-sea environment has made them hard to study. The only research scientists could do was from rare specimens that washed up on the shore. In 2004, researchers in Japan snapped the first pick of a live giant squid. Two years later, they managed to bring one up to the surface. Because they live so deep in the sea, their eyes are the size of a beach ball. They can see things in the darkest places of the ocean where other creatures would struggle to see anything at all. To this day, the giant squid has never been caught or kept in captivity to be studied in full. Next, we've got the rarest large mammal on the planet, the Javan rhino. Less than 70 are left, and they all live in a national park on the island of Java, Indonesia. Of the five total rhino species, they're the most endangered one. Scientists aren't sure how long they live, but guess somewhere between 30 to 40 years. The area where they live is vulnerable to tsunamis, and they're also close to many active volcanoes. 
If any of them erupts, the Javan rhino could go extinct. Now, a creature you've probably never heard of is the Indri. The Madagascar native is a unique primate that relies on trees to move around and feed. They live 15 to 18 years in the wild, but in captivity, some barely made it one year. Probably because they don't do so well with stress and disturbance. Experts believe their diet is so specific that it can't be replicated in captivity. They also notice the animals don't reproduce when they're taken out of the wild. The pink fairy armadillo doesn't have wings or do magic, but it's still an adorable little animal with a pinkish shell that acts like a living radiator. It's the smallest of all armadillos, and it spends its entire life using its bulky front claws to burrow through the earth, mostly at night. It can hardly be spotted, let alone caught, and that's why scientists haven't been able to study this fellow very much. And you'll only find it in central Argentina. Even though rare bugs are popular in zoos, one you'll never see is the giraffe weevil. Why the name? It has an extraordinarily long neck that helps the bug build its nest. No ladder needed. They spend most of their time feeding on the leaves of a single tree species dubbed in their honor – the giraffe beetle tree. There's another insect species called the giraffe weevil in New Zealand, but funny enough, it's an entirely different species. Straight from the deepest part of the Earth comes the Mariana snailfish. It thrives at 26,000 feet below. It's almost as high as planes fly, only the opposite direction, of course. The pressure at such depths is so intense, it feel like an elephant is standing on your toe. Ow! Thus, it just couldn't make it in the shallower waters of an aquarium. Another deep-sea lover is the Dumbo octopus. It lives 13,000 feet below the surface. At those depths, it rarely feels threatened. So this little cutie doesn't have an ink sac like other octopuses, which use theirs for protection to get away from enemies. It belongs to the family of umbrella octopuses. You can see its arms are connected by a web of skin, giving it an umbrella-like appearance when swimming around. Not many people have seen a Dumbo octopus, but it isn't an endangered species. Nobody can go that deep to mess with this guy. Lastly, one of the most critical factors for deciding if an animal can survive in an aquarium is their size. When it comes to blue whales, unless an aquarium is the size of the ocean, that's a no-go. And an animal that big needs tons of food. No aquarium could ever afford it. It's an endangered species with less than 25,000 left. These marine mammals migrate over thousands of miles. To cover such vast distances, a blue whale can actually sleep while it's swimming. But it's never entirely unconscious. It lightly naps while cruising through the water. That's a big boy.